Thank you very much indeed, Sean, and it's great to be uh, here with you um, and to tell you a bit about uh, what the Care Quality Commission, or CQC, is doing and what my role is uh, within it. Um, for those that were here uh, for the previous session, you will have seen that there were two helicopters going across. One was, one was me piloting and another was somebody else piloting. Unfortunately, I don't actually have a helicopter, although I have been suggesting this because it would be a great way of getting around the country and most, most hospitals have helipads, so I could just do twice as uh, many visits if I had that. But I don't think that would go down well, probably with people who watch the money. So, what is CQ's role and purpose? I'll talk about that, how we're going about our new approach, and what we found about the health service in our first year of doing this. Um, first of all, uh, the Care Quality Commission covers the whole of health and social care. So, uh, that it covers GP surgeries, dentists, hospitals, mental health uh, services, ambulance services, um, but also uh, care homes as well. And I'm one of three chief inspectors. I don't have to do the whole lot, but I do have hospitals, mental health services, community health services, and I'm learning a lot about ambulance services, uh, which I didn't know about before. Um, we're there to make sure that services are of high quality, providing people with safe, effective care. Um, we encourage services to improve. We're not technically an improvement agency, but what we always say is we're actually there as an, as an agent for improvement. I wouldn't be doing the job if I didn't think it was going to drive up standards. And the new thing that we're doing that um, we've never done before is to publish ratings uh, of, of hospitals and individual services within hospitals. And uh, you'll see more of that in a minute. Whatever service we're going into, whether it's a GP practice, a care home or a hospital, we're asking five questions. Is it safe? Is it effective, caring, responsive and well-led? Um, safe, effectively, if you go into a hospital, you don't expect to get worse. Um, you don't expect uh, to get pressure uh, sores. You don't expect to um, get... Uh, to be allowed to fall out of bed or whatever. Effective is actually about making people better, and that's, again, what we tend to go into hospital for. Caring, we mean the, the human-to-human -human interaction, the nurse to the patient, the doctor to the patient, but the receptionist to the patient as well. Responsive is more about what the hospital does. Um, you know, does it see you quickly? Does it offer you an appointment quickly? If you go to outpatients, are, are you kept waiting around for hours and hours and hours? All of those things. Uh, but it's also about how we deal with various vulnerable groups, such as people with dementia or with learning disabilities. And then another new thing that we're doing is trying to assess how well-led individual services are and hospitals. And we've been working very closely with colleagues at the King's Fund uh, on how best to do that. So why have we been changing? Very simply, because in the past we missed things that were important. Uh, and you, we, we missed things at Mid Staffordshire, we missed things at Morecambe Bay, uh, we missed things in the care home sector at Winterbourne View. Um, equally, we, we focused on the sort of bottom end. Uh, in other words, is it okay or is it not okay? We didn't ever really try and say, is this really good or is it outstanding? Um, so we weren't able to give a, uh, an overall picture of care. And in general, our inspectors were expected to do everything. They were expected to go into a dentist's surgery one day um, and into um, a hospital the next and they're all about an intensive care unit. And I don't think that's um, feasible. And so, not surprisingly, what we did didn't command confidence. But there were good elements and what we've tried to do is to keep those good elements. So what do we do? Um, I, the bit before we ever go on an inspection really matters, uh, the so-called pre-inspection. We decide which trusts we're um, going to, and by the way, we've just done one of the trusts in Bristol and we're just about to do the other one. Um, it's perfect timing because we haven't got the results at the moment, so you can't, you can't try and get those out of me um, <coughs> because we, we haven't got them. Um, but we select which trust we're going to, um, we then plan the inspection, we get as much information together, we, that's partly from all sorts of national data sets, uh, it's partly from things that Neil will talk about, it's partly from coming to Health Watch and asking them what they know, it's also about going to the trust itself and saying, tell us, uh, give us extra information. Then we recruit a team. Um, the, the teams are large teams. We always look at eight core services, which I'll come back to. 
We ask our five questions, which I've shown you. We go round the hospital, not as a team of 30. We do split up into smaller groups um, as so not to be too imposing on different clinical areas. But a lot of it is about listening. We always hold a, a public or patient listening event bef just before we start, but we hold focus groups with staff. What the junior doctors, what the, the junior nurses, the senior nurses, the consultants tell us really does help us to know what might be going in and on. And then we uh, talk to the senior management uh, of the trust towards the end. Then we take all that away, uh, we write the report, we send it back to the trust, uh, at, we have a meeting where we uh, look through all the reports and try and make sure we're being uh, exactly fair between trusts and we confirm what the rating should be. And then we hold a quality summit where we get all the local people together to say, this is what we found, now what are you going to do about it? The, the services that we go and look at are fairly obvious ones because they're either lots of patients go through them or there's high risk or it's both. So the A&E department, it would be perverse if we didn't go uh, into that. The medical wards, the surgical wards and theatres, but the critical care unit, maternity unit, children and young people, all things I think are, are fairly obvious. But we can also go anywhere else if we hear concerns or complaints or whatever. So if we hear that there's a real problem in ophthalmology, we will get an ophthalmologist, an eye doctor, to come with us on the inspection so that we can really look at that in detail. Then the question of ratings, and this is, this is the controversial bit usually. So we are, uh, what we're doing is for each service we go into, we're asking the five questions and we're scoring each of those on a four-point scale. Any of those of you in the audience who are in education or have had children in education will recognise the four-point scale of outstanding good, requires improvement and inadequate. We like colour schemes. It's always a question of if you've got red, amber and green, what's the one beyond that? So we give it a blue star for, for, for outstanding. Um, there's a very good reason for having four, not five. That all the scientific evidence is, if you've got five categories, people always put people in the middle one, uh, which doesn't really, really help. Um, so those are our, our four uh, rating scales. And so by the time we come away from a hospital, um, and this, uh, uh, we have our eight services that we've, I mentioned before, our five questions, and we are trying to give a rating to each and every one of those. And so this is, well, it is actually a, a, a real hospital, um, but what you can see is there are certain things uh, like the caring uh, column, the middle of the column there, uh, is very good, all green and one outstanding. Um, the children's and young people's uh, service in that hospital was good throughout on all five questions. But you can also see that there was quite a lot that needed to be put right, and we actually thought the, the maternity, uh, the safety there was inadequate, that was our bottom category, um, and so uh, we rated it as such. Uh, so that's a, 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 an example, but it, what it also shows you that within one hospital, you can get huge variation from some things that are outstanding and some uh, that, are, that are not. So, um, how much have we done so far? We've been round of the acute hospitals, acute hospital trusts. We've done just about 40% in the last uh, year. Um, we're also not quite as far on with mental health and with um, community health services, but we've made a good start. Um, and we've just started on, on the ambulance trusts. And the same broad approach uh, in, in each of those areas. Obviously, we modify what the core services are, um, and we take different teams uh, to those different areas. Um, I do need to say uh, that apart from our very first wave, the first three months, where we, we tried to get a complete range um, of uh, hospitals we thought would be very good and some that we thought might not be, we have generally skewed what we've done to ones we think are higher risk because we need to get around those uh, as sooner. That does not mean they're all higher risk, um, the ones we're doing, so don't make, uh, take any um, <coughs> thing from that about what we're saying about Bristol at all. Um, but we've also, there were 14 trusts reviewed as part of the so-called KIA review because they had high death rates last year and we committed to going back to all of those this, this year, which we've done. So what have we found? Um, there is huge variation between uh, the best and the worst, 
And I would say that it's absolutely unacceptable. If we claim that we've got a national health service, we should expect it to have a uniform quality. It will vary slightly, obviously, but the, the variation is far too great. You wouldn't expect that if you went to whatever your favourite supermarket was, uh, whether it's uh, Waitrose or <coughs> Tesco's or Sainsbury's or whoever, if you go into branches in different parts of the country, you expect them to be roughly speaking the same. Um, well, unfortunately, our hospitals are not. Um, and there is variation between our hospital trusts, as I've already shown you, between services within a trust and sometimes even within an individual service. It can be just one or two wards um, that may be way off the pace uh, while other things are functioning well. And what I'm always interested in is not only that, um, that we find that, but does the hospital know about it and what are they doing about it? Um, and they, sh they should know about it before we get there. So this is just to give you a few more examples. This is Basildon Hospital, which actually a year ago was put into special measures because it was not doing uh, at all well. And you can see the, the vast majority of this now is green for good. There are a few areas that are requiring improvement, but there are a couple of areas within maternity uh, that are actually outstanding. Um, and, and so they have made huge progress in the course of a year, and we felt going down to the bottom right-hand corner, we felt overall uh, this hospital was undoubtedly uh, a good one. And, and so a real uh, congratulations to them for the progress they've made in a, in a short space of time. Um, contrast that with Wexham Park Hospital, part of the Heatherwood and Wexham Park Trust, um, where you can see we had a lot of concerns. There's a lot of red on that diagram for inadequate. And but despite that, again, look at children and young people, and that was good throughout. So somehow, the people that were running the children's service managed to so isolate themselves from uh, all the other troubles around them and deliver good, good care. And the, the critical care unit was pretty good. There was one area uh, where we, we faulted it. But um, I think you can see there, again, the contrast between that and Basildon. Um, and then... Most recently, we've had our first uh, trust that we have rated outstanding overall. This is Frimley Park uh, Trust. It's a district general hospital, um, not far from the M3. Um, and you can see a lot of this was outstanding. And just about everything else was good. We did find one area that uh, safety for children's services required improvement. It was not terrible by any means, but it required improvement. Um, but uh, overall, uh, we rated that as a, a fantastic trust. Now, the really interesting thing is, uh, if, if, for those who've been keeping up to, with, with what's happening, Frimley Park, this one, has just taken over the previous one. And so what we're all going to be interested in watching is can Frimley Park turn Wexham Park into something that's really very good? And if so, how long will it take? That's a, that's a, a an, if you like, an experiment that I think we all ought to watch with great interest and, and, and great hope. Um, that that will really make a difference to, to um, care given at Wexham Park. So a, a few other just general comments before I finish. Care, in terms of the care given by individuals to patients, is really alive and well in the NHS. All the trusts we've ins inspected, the vast majority of services, we've seen that. But as I mentioned before, there are some areas where just individual services or individual wards really slip up and they are often uh, wards for the frail elderly and sometimes they're so-called escalation wards, wards that are opened because of winter pressures and more patients coming into hospital and they often don't have stable staffing and stable leadership on those wards. The culture of a hospital, um, something that's quite difficult to define, but actually when you go into a hospital and you spend three or four days there, you really get to know about it. We also have some objective data. There's a staff survey that really helps us on that. Looking at the staff sickness levels, particularly if the staff sickness level in one department is very high, I would always want to go and look at that and say, what's going on there? Um, but we have seen some uh, trusts where there really is an open and learning culture, um, very positive views. Actually, if I go back to the Frimley Park example, um, I had a, held a focus group with 25 junior doctors. And 
they were just eulogizing about what it was like to work in that, that hospital. At the end of the hour, I said, you've got to tell me something that's wrong. Surely there's something that's wrong. And they said, oh, well, the parking is difficult. But then somebody else said, but the management are doing their best to sort it out. And, that, you, you know, and actually, that did reflect what was going on in the trust um, when we ex looked at the rest of it. But there are other places where it's still them and us between doctors and managers, um, and that really doesn't help. Uh, but there are some things being done about that, and, and it, it can be moved on. Um, so what do I think? Uh, I'm quite convinced that what we're doing now is better than whatever we've done before. Um, but also, it's not what I say. It is the fact that we have had an independent evaluation that's broadly confirmed. It's not that it's saying that we haven't got things to improve. We are still on a learning uh, curve. But we also know that our inspections now are better than the ones we did at the end of last year. But this business of being consistent between uh, trusts is always going to be our biggest uh, challenge, particularly as we're not just doing a tick box exercise, we are uh, trying to use judgment. So I'm going to end there by saying I think we've come really quite a long way in only 14 months. It's undoubtedly better than what's gone before, but we know we've got to go on improving because if we go on improving, I'm quite sure that will help to drive improvement in the NHS. Thank you very much.